Right, so lads, down to serious business. It's Cork against Dublin, first of the All Ireland hurling semi finals. Let me put it to you, Paul, uh, about the five week layoff. Would it be of concern to you, considering that in 2000, in, in 02, you won your first Munster title and you had, to, you had a bit of a wait uh, before you got to Cork Park? That's right, Mark, to be at seven weeks. Seven? Uh, seven, yeah. Um, and a lot of other things kind of stacked against us. It was our first provincial win in 39 years. So the cup mm. was kind of paraded around the county in the cool camps and the summer camps and clubs and mm. clubs and pubs, if you want, um, for a while. It was a kind of a celebrated like an All-Ireland win. And then I think um, the qualifier and kind of series, there was a couple of draws and we didn't know who we were playing till the week before. And Wexford had put Kilkenny into the back door as well that year. <laughs> um, Michael Jacobs, great goal in the last oh, minute yes, of the yes. Leinster semi-final. So at least Dublin know that they had Cork two, in two weeks. They can yes. prepare, say, ma match-ups and kind of their game plans and whatever. Whereas we were kind of like five days, six days before the match wonder. And, and on, on that occasion, Clare looked very leggy against, mm. against Kilkenny. And we thought, you know, maybe that we were a bit complacent that we thought we'd take Clare. But... Cork, on the other hand, will come in having played games the whole way up, you know, good games as well, um, having, you know, taken out Kilkenny, like they'll be full of confidence. So the first 20 minutes of that game will be vital for Dublin. You know, they'll, they'll be wondering, is their form as good as it was in the Leinster final? They'll be wondering how good were Galway in the Leinster final, mm. con considering Galway are gone out of the champions. So a lot of questions are there for Dublin. But it's really, it's, it's, it comes down to, like, if the players are fresh mm. and ready for it. If, if they haven't been waiting around, you know, too long, like mm. five weeks. They probably played a club game or two, a couple of challenge matches and that. But you know, it's such it's such a new adventure for Dublin. Yeah. That I think they won't be caught with dry off the ball. Lots of experience waiting five weeks in Kilkenny. So what would be the Kilkenny way of doing things? Well, normally Marty would have a, a club game if not two. You know, in that period of time, I suppose the week leading up to the game then is, is a week of freshness and it's only a bit of ball work and that. So you know, you're just getting your mind ready for that week. So you can only, you might only have two weeks maybe of training with Kilkenny around that period of time. And it's a matter of actually the attitude of the players, as Paul is saying, like you know, getting down to work at that stage and how much work you actually put in because the last thing you want now is, is heading the last week or so saying God we have actually done much and the intensity wasn't there so um, I presume like Anthony Daly obviously knows the stuff like and he's been around the blocks you know a long time now so I've no doubt these boys are training away hard and they're, they're training with high intensity and that's what they need to do coming into this game Rory were you impressed with Dublin was, th was this a difficult Leinster championship for them to win yeah, I'm sure it was. I, I think the critical thing for Dublin was last year they, they, they got the kick in the backside, you know, and, and that's very much fresh in their mind and I'd say has helped to keep them very focused uh, this year. And it's the, probably the principal reason why I don't think they're going to slip up or just not turn up on any given day. They're certainly going to turn up with a performance. Whether it's, it's good enough is, is, is another question. But, I mean, this team has been coming. They've been more and more competitive every year. And uh, I think it's, it's no great surprise that they've gone as far as they have. Paul, what about this match in terms of the pairings? Uh, where do you see the key battle between Cork and Dublin? Well, or if you've seen Dublin over the last couple of games, the amount of possession or half-back line have repelled and even won directly. Um, it's a huge advantage to them. You know, placing Liam Rush at centre-back has been a master stroke. Um, you know, not, I've seen him there a couple of times, two years ago under 21, when they uh, won the Leicester Championship. But... He's just the strength of the lad, you know, and he, he seems to be not alone playing centre back, but but playing, you know, deep and kind of on the wings. And he's finding a player with with a with any delivery. He's not just you know to turn and off his right or left long. Like he's creating, you know, nearly attacks for Dublin, and, and it's been a huge plus. And he's he seems to be such a presence there that any kind of miss hit clearance from, from the opposition, he's, he's mopping up. But you know, the question is, will Cork allow, you know, will they go with Pat Cronin centre forward or will they go with a smaller man to try kind of drag him out mm. and create the space behind him but, you know, for Dublin you know, so far this year he's been fantastic Now, certainly Jimmy Byrne Murphy had planned how to beat Kilkenny and I, it was an interesting tussle at midfield are, uh, Would you say the Cork midfield is underrated? Are they stronger than what you even thought they were going to be? No, they're two young boys, you know, they're, they're two flyers and they're, they're well able to get up and down the field, so they're Marty. And um, that's actually the area where I think actually is going to be a, a key battle, you know, because you have, um, you have for Dublin, you have McCaffrey and Boland there in midfield. They've been very, very strong throughout the year so far, the two phys physical men and well able again to get up and down the field. So I think that battle there is going to be huge. Um, and the, the, the delivery of the ball into the forwards on both sides, you know, like Dublin like the kind of ball to the corners and, and sharp ball and as well Cork like that as well you know for likes of Farrell and these lads getting onto it so uh, I think the battle there is going to be huge who wins it especially the half back line as well I suppose on either side is going to be key but midfield should be an interesting one and the two Cork boys are, are well able to hurl and you know it should be an interesting tussle 
Are Cork over reliant on Pat Horgan, do you think, Paul? At the minute, I think they are, Marty. Like, I mean, he scored 11 points the last day out of 19, um, seven from freeze. So, mm. like, I mean, if you look at Cork's record so far this year, they haven't really rattled the net that much, in fact, at all. No. Um, you know, the 14 points in the Munster final was a poor enough showing. Um, you know, when they defeated Clare, it was, uh, you know, a mountain of points again, but they, did, they didn't really get in to create goal opportunities. And, you know, they have plenty of players mm. like that. They have good forwards, Conor Lahan. Obviously, Jamie Collin and, and uh, Luke O'Farrell in the corner. That they are, they're, they're getting on the breaks, but they seem to be content to take the points. Um, OK, they're not being fouled either, but unless they're prepared to kind of get in behind the full back line of, of the other teams and take a goal, I, don't, I, I, you know, I, f I see it hard for them so, to... So you're saying really, Paul, that Cork need to be more clinical, that they actually do need to score a goal against Dublin? Well, Dublin, Dublin scored 225 in the Leinster final, you know, scored 117 twice against Wexford and, and, and you know, one... 20 against Kilkenny, so I think from that point of view, you know, Cork will find it hard to outscore Dublin if they don't take their chances. They're kind of they're anticipating the breaks well, but they seem to be content in just tapping over the points. Again, like I mean, the direct ball sometimes is an issue as well. Sometimes the corner forwards, one goes behind, one goes in front, but they're getting into positions. You can see here, Luca Farrell, again, takes it up, goes in, but again, he comes always comes back out and takes a shot. So I think Cork will definitely need to kind of take take the punishment and get in behind the full back line and. And they will need, I think, two goals to, uh, to upset Dublin. Rory, is Croke Park a factor? In the sense that a lot of these Cork players haven't played in Croke Park. I don't know. I think Croke Park is something that you, if you haven't played there before, it's something you notice when you go out first. Mm. It, you know, it's obviously a lot different than anywhere else you're, you're playing. But I think, particularly at All-Ireland semi-final stage, once the match gets underway, really, all you see is the guy you're on. And you, you quickly forget the, the surroundings. So... I, I don't think it will play a huge factor at, at this stage. Um, and I, I appreciate Cork, some of the lads haven't played there before, but they've played in big games, and, and that's really what it's about uh, on Sunday. Michael, you know Cork and you know Dublin rather well at this yeah. stage. Who do you think has the edge? Um, I'd say maybe Dublin, Marty. You know, I think they're, they're a physical team and they're a fast team, and they've had a good run um, into the semi final. Um, you know, I was. You know, I've seen, seen both games you know, down Port Leash and I was impressed with their game, with their intensity and with their work rate and the way they had to get the bottom to the forwards nice and low and you know, they're, they're unstoppable there once a couple of stages because the players run off um, of, of the man with the ball every time so you know, they're, um, they're, they're, just, they're just actually in great shape at the moment, they have great confidence at the moment as well so I reckon Dublin could have the edge but you know, you know Cork, Jimmy Barry Murphy, you know, old head there and they're going to put up a great battle and you know, it's a flick of a kind with these semi-finals at the moment Marty. Like, you know, it has been that way for even in the quarter-final stage. It's a flick of a coin between any team. Favourites don't come into it. It's on a day at this stage. And actually, Nash has conceded no goals as well, and that's a factor, I'm sure. Yeah, Nash is flying. You know, I went to Nash, actually with Nash in college down the CIT, and I'm delighted to see him getting his game. He's, he's, he's a, an all-star <coughs> last year, and he's had a great performance so far. So he, he's a great shot stopper. But um, you know, Dublin have the forwards, and maybe to test him the weekend, and you know, it sh should be an interesting one. Okay, Michael Finley is going for Dublin. In a word, Rory, Dublin or Cork? I go Cork. Cork. Okay, so Paul Flynn, you have the casting vote. Cork I'll go with or Cork. Dublin? I'll go with Cork. So Cork are going to get through to the All-Ireland Final according to our Championship Matters uh, panel.